I share the disappointment of many that we've not found more support on the other side of the aisle for legislative responses to state level voting restrictions. I wish that were not the case. Just as I wish there had been a more serious effort on the part of Democratic Party leaders to sit down with the other party and genuinely discuss how to reforge common ground on these issues. So that was Senator Kirsten Sinema um, explaining why she uh, supports voting rights bills in the same way that she supports all sorts of other legislation that have no chance of passing so long as the filibuster uh, remains. Um, but she's not going to do literally anything to change or reform the filibuster. She won't even go so not far as to require people filibustering to actually filibuster. Nothing, no reform at all. And in that speech, in the clip that you just saw, she implies that there is a theoretical world where nationally elected Republicans might be willing to be a party to stopping state level Republicans from effectively getting rid of democracy, stopping people from voting, all of that. And that because we haven't reached that hypothetical world, it's obviously the Democrats fault for not extending enough of an olive branch to these Republicans. What do, you, what do you two think about this? So we'll start with you, Nina. It's a joke, I mean, really. The woman just might as well go and fess up that she doesn't care whether or not democracy is saved or not. This is really just about her because if it was about democracy, then she would be fierce in trying to convince her Republican colleagues if they need, obviously they need convincing, but to convince them that ending the filibuster to vote on voting, to vote, to have a vote on voting rights is the right thing to do. But she's not serious. She's just playing games and she's hiding behind the Republicans. But this is really how she feels. She wants the filibuster to stay in play, so they don't have to take up anything mm-hmm. serious. Yeah. She's completely bad faith about it. I mean, it's so ridiculous and putting that on even footing, right? Saying that, you know, just as I wish Republicans would help us, you know, it's also the Democrats. It's that it is not actually also the Democrats, unless you're talking about yourself, Senator Sinema. It is you who is standing in the way of getting voting rights enshrined in this country. It's just insane. It's like, you know, um, I gee, I really wish like you know the person who was like stabbing me with a knife right now <laughs> would participate in removing that knife. But man, they really—it's almost like they are a murderer. Like <laughs> like the the idea that Republicans are going to get on board with like you know she, she's like oh and I'm I'm just so sorry that my Republican colleagues aren't also on board with the voting rights. Yeah, because they're literally currently stripping them away from people. They're busy. They're busy Mm -hmm. taking them away. Why would you ever expect them to do otherwise? We're looking to you and you're not showing any leadership. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And look, this morning when Brett Ehrlich and I were talking about this, he said that this is the sort of topic that more so than most drives apathy for for the people who even still have the stomach that they can pay attention to this sort of stuff. Is that the stakes are incredibly high, whether we'll have elections that are worth a damn. Also, the other stakes are anything that Joe Biden might potentially do. And one obstacle to progress are Republicans who are 100% operating in bad faith, who have no interest in, let's just keep it real, any legislation ever passing in the Senate in any form, other than potentially maybe another round of tax cuts. They will approve right wing justices to the Supreme Court and other you know other levels of the federal judiciary and occasionally pass tax cuts. And that is it. They will And the military budget, John. And the military. Yeah, that's true. That sort of stuff has to happen. They know how to find bipartisanship when it comes to the military industrial complex. But it's not okay, the right wing looks out at the country at their base and they identify problems that their their base is experiencing and they just wanna get out there and debate how we're gonna solve those and, and maybe the Democrats see different problems or at least have different solutions to them. There is none of that, it's all bad faith, it's all fake, it's all at the behest of their donors. But then also another layer of it is, oh well, we can't even overpower them because cinema, but she is operating in at least as bad faith. All mm-hmm. of her arguments about tradition, it means absolutely nothing. And she is, we have had obviously corrupt politicians for as long as America has had politicians. We've had them all our lives, we're used to them. But I almost feel as if 
she is somehow a more insidious version of it. It is so obvious that she does not care and is not willing to even pretend to care about anything about our political system, representation, ethics, some sort of obligation to her constituents, to her party, to her president, to literally anything. It just feels as if she is spitting in our face with every word that she says. And for a regular person to tune in occasionally to the news and, and see that she's one of the people that's gonna determine whether anything happens or not, I, 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 have, to, I have to be understanding. That would drive <laughs> me away too. Yeah. I, I, First of all, and I agree, Mansion and Cinema has been—they have been given too much power in this scenario, just far, just way too much power. And they, you know, there's a, a, a some lines in, in a rap song, "Get high off your own supply," <laughs> and that's exactly what they're doing right now, to the detriment of this country. And and this is a woman, right, who tweeted time and time again about how Congressman John Lewis was her hero. Hello, somebody. How is he your hero? And you won't even stand up and fight so that the John Lewis Voting Rights Act is passed. So we can put some action behind those words. He can't be your hero. Those are just empty words. Mm-hmm. She's full of it. They full of, and it's not just them. You know, uh, 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 T- Senator Chris Coons. You know, uh, Senator John Tester. Yep. Senator Mark Kelly. You, uh, you know, I mean, those names kind of cropped up too in an article that I read that they kind of don't know what to do on the filibuster. Yeah. What do you mean you don't know what to do? Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah, because they're afraid. They're afraid that the floodgates are open. They're afraid that once Democrats actually grow a spine, they might have to deliver something for the people. It is so easy to lose and then fundraise off of your losing, right? Fundraise off of, oh, they're obliterating abortion rights. They already are. They've been doing this. Mm-hmm. Republicans have a plan, okay? Mm-hmm. They're think tanks, they're lobbyists, they're, you know, the Steve Bannons and the other sort of like, you know, whatever, basement dwellers. They have a plan and they've been enacting it to incredible results. Yeah. What is the Democrats' plan other than losing and fundraising and making sure they can still insider trade their stocks? There is no plan that speaks to the American people. They are so out of touch. And Kirsten Cinema is a perfect example of that. And the, the only thing I'll say about power is I am frustrated too that there's so much power in these two senators. And that just tells you about the Senate. The Senate is so unrepresentative. It is so anti-democratic. In fact, it was set up Mm -hmm. to protect minority rule in and of itself. To say nothing of the fact that more Republican senators represent fewer American people. And that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin of West Virginia represent a fraction of the Democratic senators who represent many more people who want things like voting rights, Build Back Better Act passed. So it's almost like it's good we have it's terrible, but it's good we have this problem because it, it it allows us to laser focus on the systemic issues. Mm-hmm. It's not just their personalities. It is the fact that the Senate leads to this kind of corruption, to this kind of entrenched power. Yeah, yeah, and the amazing you're totally yeah. right about the the fundamentally unrepresent and intentionally unrepresentative, um, and I'd say like purposefully creating inequity in in being able to translate popular opinion into legislation. The Senate is designed to make that very, very difficult to do. And you basically have to be rich to actually run and win. Oh, And then you also have to raise tons of money from other people yeah. who have tons of money. Oh, But then also we're gonna make it so that even if you get 51 senators, it's not enough. You have to get to 60 now. We're just gonna magnify the inequity that's already baked into the system. Well, um, I'm gonna make you in the audience, I apologize, uh, suffer through just one more clip where she explains what is supposed to be her thought process uh, on the filibuster. Bearing in mind, of course, that she doesn't mean a single word that she's about to say. These bills help treat the symptoms of the disease, but they do not fully address the disease itself. And while I continue to support these bills, I will not support separate actions that worsen the underlying disease of division infecting our country. The debate over the Senate 60 vote threshold shines a light on our broader challenges. There's no need for me to restate my longstanding support for the 60 vote threshold to pass legislation. There's no need for me to restate its role protecting our country from wild reversals in federal policy. 
It is a view I've held during my years serving in both the U.S. House and the Senate. And it is the view I continue to hold. It is the belief that I have shared many times in public settings and in private settings. Yes, so uh, Curse of Cinema, like me, like many of you, uh, probably would prefer for America to not descend into fascism, but we don't want to be divisive about it. I mean, we don't want to do so. Like, they're stripping away people's ability to vote and uh, installing people as state, as secretaries of state that are going to overturn the results purely because Trump won't win in these states. Um, but you Democrats are being very divisive about having a problem with that. And so, look, th this is her argument or her argument. She doesn't mean it. It's what Nina was saying. It's a shield against having to do anything. Um, but Biden. Seeing all of this, we've now been through months and months and months and months of Cinema and Mansion's views on the filibuster and their unwillingness to, to, to change anything. Even though in some cases they do, she's talking about how the filibuster is inviolate, you can't ever change it. She just voted to do a carve out for raising the debt ceiling less than a month ago. And mm -hmm. so let's not pretend, again, nothing that she says does she mean. He says he's not sure about the voting bill, Biden, he's not sure about the voting bill's future. After Cinema reiterated her opposition and said, like every other major civil rights bill that came along, if we miss the first time, we could come back and try the second one. We miss this time. We miss this time. Okay, so he'll he'll come back, like they're coming back for the reconciliation bill. So uh, if he does that, if we come back, what is supposed to be different? What is he going to do to get through to her or to Mansion? And honestly, what could he do? To get through to them, considering that they they don't feel any obligation to their constituents or the country, they don't care about any of that. Do either of you have any ideas about what he either will do or what you think he should do? Yeah, well, I say gas up the jet mm -hmm. and just go on and get on into go into West Virginia and Arizona. I mean, he's done everything. He's been very diplomatic towards these two. This woman waited till this man was in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Talking about the importance of voting rights, which is true. And then the very next day, Francesca, not two days, not three days, not a week. The very next day, this woman threw the president of the United States under the bus over voting rights. We're not talking about a disagreement about pro-life or pro-choice or how you, no, we are talking about the fundamental foundation and pillar of democracy is that one person, one vote, unfettered access to the ballot box for everybody, no matter how they want to vote. And this woman, the very next day, said, mm -mm, "No, sir, no, sir, not happening, not happening." Mm -hmm. She's she's as smart as the devil. Remember, that's what Biden said, giving her credit. Yes. Wow, yes, she's so is. smart. It almost sounds like you're not as smart as she is. And here we have the proof. You cannot find a way to pressure her. You're rolling out the red carpet. It's not working. It's time to go to Arizona. It's time to go to West Virginia. And beyond that, you know, something that we're going to talk about in a little bit as the rest of the gas up the jet line is cancel student debt. You know, I've been racking my brain this week as you see what happened in the Supreme Court around, you know, the testing mandates and the vaccine to this filibuster stuff. I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with these senators. Just let's Come get on. some executive action off the ground. Let's mobilize the National Defense Production Act. Let's get people tests, send them to every single man, woman, and child in their homes. Let's cancel all federal student debt. Come it's on. the one area. Just take your avenues, see your openings. This is, I'm a terrible at sports. But I know a little <laughs> bit about football. You got to find your openings mm -hmm. and make a rush for it. That's what the windows are closing. The walls are closing in on this presidency, not only to save himself, to save the party, but to save American people. You know, we would never, God, the three of us, we would never be this much in Biden's corner, wanting him to win mm -hmm. so hard if it didn't. If it weren't because we are all and the well being of working Americans are resting on whether or not he can fight. Yeah. You know, in the middle that's of another it. pandemic surge. So, that's yeah. It, Francesca. <laughs> one party has lost its ever loving mind, as my grandmother would say, and the other one won't use its own power. You know, the squad members get vilified 
for holding up this president's agenda saying do not separate the BIF from the B to the third power. Don't do it or we'll never get B to the third power. They get fussed at and how can you do this and we'll never. But but meanwhile, back 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 at the ranch, those <laughs> two, man, man, Manchin and Cinema, get invited to the White House over and over and over again. Yeah, it's something wrong with that picture. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna only like I I agree with with what Nina said about their refusal to use their power. In that the the Democrats who actually want something to be done won't use their power, and they have an obligation to use their power because the people are suffering and they've made promises. But to use a, a sort of a sports analogy, like uh, you know, it's a thing in some sports, basketball and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's kneeling in football. When you are like way ahead in the game, you run out the clock. You there's no incentive for you to open yourself up to losing control of the ball and letting the other team score. So, like if you're the de- if you're senior Democratic leadership or you're you know a politician, Nancy Pelosi who's been in power for literally decades, and you yourself are worth a hundred million dollars. And everyone you have spoken to for the last 10 years is worth at least $20 million. Why would you do anything? Why would you be willing to risk any change, any chaos, any instability? You're way ahead. You like you've got a hundred points on the other team, with the other team being the working class. And so, like a case can be made. They've used their power. They don't need to use their power anymore because they've got everything that they want already. And they control the entire Republican Party. They control 98% of the Democratic Party. It's like a case can be made that she's just the most brazen element of it. But yeah, Biden, look, he had an obligation to use his executive power, even if Manchin and Cinema all of a sudden were the best progressives in the country and legislation was just flying through the Senate. He would still have an obligation to use the power that he has. But in the absence of literally anything being done by the Senate, they've they've passed like two bills in a year. For him to refuse to do what he can, the the few things that can be done, that it doesn't matter one bit what Manchin thinks about it or what Cinema thinks about it. Cinema can cry all she wants if he cancels student loan debt. She can't stop him. Yep. And yep. he won't do it. That I gotta say, however much disdain you have for cinema, you should have at least as much for Joe Biden. Because he should be angry at her. He should he should can't. He should cancel $50 billion in student loan debt today and say tomorrow I'm gonna do another 50 billion until you revise the filibuster. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut down a coal plant each day, Joe sure, Manchin, until you Go like, stand. F- figure yeah. some sort of leverage. Like it's difficult, I'm not saying it's easy. These people don't feel accountable to virtually anything, but there's gotta be a pressure point. There's gotta be some leverage you can use. And he's just, what do we got after a year? He's coming out and occasionally raising his voice a little bit while refusing to even use their names. And we're supposed to be impressed by that. I just I just have to add one thing. You know, we've talked a lot about moderate on moderate or centrist on centrist crime lately. Uh, you know, and the fact that the people killing the president's bill are not progressives, as Nina Turner just said. Um, and I think that, you know, we we have to keep in mind that. Kirsten Cinema's bad faith argument around the filibuster is actually a crystallization of the BS bipartisanship like mantra right there. Like we have to work together, work together, work together. Look at where it's gotten us. Like you can hate, and I think a lot of you know centrist liberals, moderates, they're mad at cinema. Oh, we're mad at cinema, but we hate progressives more. No, 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 no. Look who's tanking your agenda. It's the idea of bipartisanship. When by the way, let us remember. All her like backtracking around history, Oh, when Democrats used it, when Republicans use it. Republicans, they don't need to lift the filibuster rules anymore because they got everything they want. Yep. Like they're like, oh, well, let's see, I got all my uh, Supreme Court justice nominees. Uh, we're rolling back voting rights. Uh, we got a fascist in office. Like they, it's yep. coming up for them. It's coming up roses for them. They are loving it. So what are you talking about? Like. They won't, the shoe will never be on the other foot again. It'll always be in the Republicans' favor. It already is in the yeah. Republicans' favor. And she's against pulling back the sort of, you know, the, the mantle a little bit more to the center because, you know, the dishes are falling off the plate here. I mean, <laughs> off the table. 100%. Yeah. Tablecloth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> John and Francesca, y'all preaching the gospel, baby. <laughs> just, I'm just like, amen. 
I'm about Thank to leap you. out my skin right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, uh, it, well, let's also bear in mind they can pass trillions of dollars of tax cuts through reconciliation. No filibuster is gonna stop that. They care yes. about the money and they care about the judges and that's basically it. Uh, the judges will give them the culture war stuff they want and if a progressive ever passes a piece of legislation in some hypothetical future, the conservative supermajority will knock it down. So we have a fun future looking ahead. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.